In this video, you're going to learn what's new in the updated SEAL Core exam. It's the same exam number, 350-801, but it's now going from version 1.0 to 1.1. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and if you enjoy this video, please do me a huge favor and click on like, and also subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now, specifically, what are we going to be learning in this video? We're going to begin by taking a look at when this takes effect. As I'm recording this, the week of January the 22nd, 2023, the version 1.0 exam is still in effect, and we're going to see when version 1.1 takes effect. We're going to see what's different specifically. We'll consider what topics have been removed in this version of the exam, what topics have simply been updated or reworded a bit, and what topics are brand new. And this is a follow-up to another video I did earlier in this month where we were talking about Cisco's certification roadmap. And they're staying true to the roadmap, it looks like. We took a look at this graphic in a video published earlier this month, and we saw that Cisco was going to announce an update to the collaboration exam sometime in Q2. And Cisco's Q2 runs from November through January. So sure enough, late January 2023, Cisco did announce updates to the collaboration track. And by the way, while this video is focused on the collaboration update, they also announced the new data center update. But just because they announce it, it doesn't mean the exam takes effect right away. We see that the exam is going to be published and the prior exam is going to be retired for both data center and collaboration sometime in Q3. And Cisco's Q3 is February through April. And just announced last week, the day when the new exam takes effect is April the 20th. That means the last day you're going to be allowed to take version 1.0 of the CO Core exam is April 19th, 2023. So if you're studying for that exam right now, you've got some time, depending on when you're watching this, you've got through April the 19th to pass that exam. And then the next day, April the 20th, the new exam, version 1.1, takes effect. And by the way, those are the same dates for the data center core exam to retire and the new one to be published. And we're talking specifically about the SEAL core exam, which is an NP-level exam. If you're studying for CCIA collaboration, that doesn't update until July the 20th, 2023. So if you're preparing for the CCIA in collaboration, you've got a little extra study time for that. And for the remainder of this video, we want to compare version 1.1 of the exam with the current version 1.0 of the exam. And we're going to see one of the big focuses of 1.1 is a much bigger focus on Cisco WebEx. First, let's consider what topics are gone. Version 1.0 of the exam blueprint had a topic that said configure codec negotiations. Here we're using things like regions. That topic is conspicuously absent from the version 1.1 exam blueprint. And this next one is really curious to me. Cisco has removed the topic of configure ISDN PRI and BRI. Not a huge surprise, honestly. But what is a huge surprise is there's still the topic on the exam blueprint of troubleshoot ISDN, PRI, and BRI. And my view on that is, if you need to be able to troubleshoot it, don't you need to be able to configure it? Also, pretty much any topic dealing with Cisco Jabber and dealing with Cisco I am in presence, that's gone because Cisco is transitioning away from Jabber to WebEx. We're not going to be focused on the I am in presence server anymore. We're going to be focused on the Cisco WebEx meeting server. And some topics were not completely removed, but the wording was updated a bit. For example, the wording in version 1.0 of the exam blueprint said we need to be able to troubleshoot collaboration endpoints. And in our course, we go into the uh, real-time monitoring tool, our TMT, and take a look at some trace files. But the wording has been updated in version 1.1, where we're not troubleshooting uh, collaboration endpoints in general. We're specifically troubleshooting SIP endpoints. And that sense, Cisco is moving away from skinny client control protocol to SIP for pretty much all of their endpoints. Another updated topic deals with media resources. We know that Cisco Unified Communication Manager gives us some software-defined resources. We could also have something like a Cisco Unified Border Element or a Cisco H.323 Gateway providing us hardware resources with PVDMs, Packet Voice DSP modules. And in our current course, we have a big discussion on how we can prioritize different media resources through the use of media resource groups and media resource group lists. 
Well, the topic in version 1.0 says identify the appropriate media resources for a given scenario, both hardware and software. The wording has now been changed in version 1.1 where it says identify the appropriate iOS XE media resources. So here we're not talking about physical Cisco routers with PVDMs, and we're also not talking about software-based resources inside of a communications manager. Next up, let's consider what is new. And a lot of this surrounds WebEx. You have to know about the directory connector. And as just a quick overview of that, since we're going to have some calls coming from the cloud, some calls coming on premises, we need something to synchronize the user database, which might be an active directory. Well, the directory connector is going to synchronize our on-premises active directory information with the cloud. And the primary interface that we're going to be using to manage WebEx devices is called the WebEx Control Hub. For example, the WebEx Control Hub is going to show us all of our WebEx services. It lets us manage those services. We can manage users. We can add new devices. And we can view statistical information about our WebEx devices and services. And as we move to WebEx, we might not be using Expressway to allow us to place calls from the cloud into an on-premises device. However, we could use a cloud calling hybrid local gateway. And we need to be able to describe that for the new exam. Also, we need to know about a variety of dial plan features when it comes to making calls with WebEx. And notice the verbs used in these bullet points. Explain, describe, describe, describe. The only configuration element we have when it comes to WebEx in the new exam blueprint is to be able to deploy the WebEx app. What other topics are new in this version of the exam? Well, we want to be able to onboard SIP devices. And the way we do that is going to vary based on whether or not these devices are in the cloud or they're on-premises. And if they're on-premises, there's an option to onboard that SIP device using an activation code. Also, we need to be able to describe SIP OAuth for Cisco Unified Communications Manager. You might recall the service of CAPF, which stands for Certificate Authority Proxy Function. That would help us secure our media and signaling in a communications manager environment. But with SIP OAuth, we can secure both the media and the signaling without relying on CAPF. So that's a look at what's new in the version 1.1 blueprint of Cisco's CO Core 350-801 exam. And if you're currently studying for that exam, you have through April the 19th, 2023, to pass the version 1.0 exam because on April the 20th, version 1.1 goes live. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to spending time with you again in our next video.